Hello, and welcome back. Uh, I forgot the thingy. I forgot it. Ah! Come here. Come here. All right. Closer, Bolus. Get into the shot. Special thank you. Somebody out there ordered a Bolus blanket from hauntedflower.com. But, hello. Hi. Welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGV, and today in the arena, we are playing the four-color wedge that on the Magic Wikia is known as aggro. I don't know how they name these things. Don't ask. Um, this is new to me. So, I always thought the four-color wedges were like Nephilim. Somebody called it, what, something Abzan. Was it... Spicy Abzan? Yeah, because red with Abzan. Somebody called it that. Uh, I would call it not blue. But this is the four color wedge from the color challenge, and I have cooked up something using not a cat, not an oven, and not a fires of invention. I will probably regret it deeply. And I actually think this deck might be a lot better with fires, but I went back to my girl, Kalia, the Zenith Seeker. This is a three mana, three, three flying vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top six of your library, reveal an angel, demon, and or dragon card and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in random order. So of course, now we want to play with a reasonable amount of angels, demons, and dragons. So many of these are gone, just gone from rotation. Kalia doesn't have a lot of friends anymore. So here's some Seraph of the Scales, four of those. They're not legendary. Aralia is legendary, so she gets the nod, but we can't go too deep. Then we have a few kind of nifty buy a box promo cards that fit into the wedge when you're willing to go four colors. We've got two Corvold, the Fae for Cursed King, and two Rian, Angel of Rebirth, which says whenever another multicolored creature you control dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. This kind of plays with Corvold, who can sacrifice something like a Seraph of Scales or Kalia, return it to your hand and replay it. So uh, a little funky synergy in there. And then at the top, we have some fine finality to sweep the board, get some things back, and Rakdos the Showstopper, who's sort of a sweeper. I really wanted like Casualties of War or some other mega effect in here, but I didn't want exactly Casualties of War. I wanted something I could find off the Kalia. So for the big effect, I have the Rakdos. Maybe the find should be Casualties of War, but since we have so many creatures and a lot of value, I thought the find might have more punch. It's possible this should just be Casualties of War. But one of the things I like about the deck is I actually don't have any cards that require double cost and this is something i like to do with four and five color decks you'll see me do it pretty often is i'll just take out anything that would require say double green or double red or double white because i'm struggling enough to get one of each mana on the board when i need it look at this mana base still going so in the spirit of just being able to cast my spells i'm kind of do this thing where I hedge by only making it require one of each, then I can spend my early turns concentrating on what I'm missing, which color, and not what I need doubles of. So the rest of it is we've got Angrath's Rampage and Mortify to take care of artifacts and planeswalkers, enchantments, and creatures, so it covers all the bases with targeted removal. Paradise Druid to fix the mana and ramp us up a little to cast our big creatures a little sooner. And the Hero of Precinct 1 to poop out some tokens that can't block Questing Beast. That's that's all he does. This poor, this poor, poor hero. So you once were the hero we needed. Now I don't think you are, but I I've always wanted to play a hero and Kalia deck together. So why not? This is an opportunity to do it. I certainly don't have the highest hopes for the deck, but I think it should be fun. Hopefully, some of you enjoy it. Thank and yeah, let's color challenge continues. Let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. This opener has the Paradise Druid into the Seraph of the Scales, possibly into a Corvold, so it's a it's a keepers. We do need to find an untapped land to make it all come together. I have faith in that. You need four lands on the battlefield to make Fable Passage get you an untapped source, and right now we're missing red. Opponent on the mulligans. Well, it makes sense. You would have to double mulligan all of your hands if your name is Toes, because, well, most of us 
have five toes. Per foot. Per foot. This is very important. All right. Scry it up. I don't think double Paradise Druid is where it's at. Dismal Backwater. We're behind. How about triple Paradise Druid? This is where I check myself. Yeah, it's still there. All right. Pay two life. Drop the Druid. Top deck the untapped land. Or don't. You know, that's fine too. Druid. Passage. Go. And I'm not going to crack the passage, I don't think. Let's see what happens. Here's a reef. Man, if we had had a Seraph on the battlefield, we would have so much initiative. Now we just don't. Um, it's really tempting to keep the passage to get work with the Corvold. But we'd have to draw another land. All right. I'm, I'm going to fetch now. I'm going to do it. Let's go get the mountain. Do we kill the reef? Do we drop the dragon? Hmm... All right. Well, God, this is rough. I don't have anything I really want to sacrifice to the Corvold. I'd love to get the Seraph down. Letting this reef be could be a disaster all on its own. Nothing about this is very good. Our opponent's on five cards. So I think that what makes my determination is we want to deny them value. If we deny them value, we should be able to outcard them since they mulligan twice. We'll see how it goes. And yeah, I'm pretty happy I did that now. Double reef triggers is a problem. Run it back. As bricking on lands, drawing on angels. Take four a turn, get rid of their reefs. Hope they don't have a Yarrick right here to just cause infinite sorrow. <laughs> they mulliganed into double risen reef. Feels good, man. There's a gift. Okay, that's not Yarrick. A frost lynx. Budget Elemental Yarrick? I think so. So, that locks down this Paradise Druid for a turn. We draw the land, but now we only have four mana available. Let's get a Seraph onto the battlefield. And let's see what we can scry into a hero. Yeah, hero plus Corvold is part of what we're doing here. We'll keep it and see what happens. Next turn, we can hero into scales, potentially, and keep the pressure on the battlefield. Follow that with a Corvold the next turn. Replicate. Uh-oh. Tap down the scales. Gotcha. Do you want to get feisty? Probably not when you're be... Well, I guess you're not behind on life now. The Gift of Paradise was a good catch-up mechanism. So it's questionable. Does the opponent want to attack? Or do they feel behind? Are you the beatdown or aren't you? You are the beatdown. Yes. So the opponent feels fine about their positioning even with the Seraph on the battlefield. That means that their hand must be a pretty useful concoction. More ways to stall, possibly a board clear, which would be a disaster. I don't think it changes what I'm doing though. We could drop the dragon and sacrifice the Seraph right now and draw an extra card with Corvold. But I like moving in on hero Seraph and making the opponent deal with it. Ooh, you got something? I've got another angel. Baka, give him the flaps. That's a lot of 1-1 tokens, even if the opponent sweeps the board with, I don't know, Massacre Girl? What do you think they play? This looks like a Risen Reef themed copy copy deck. Overgrowth, Elemental. Plus one, plus one counter on another Elemental. Whenever another creature you control dies, you gain a life. If that creature was an Elemental, plus one, plus one counter. Yeah, this is... This is an elemental Yarrick Risen Reef deck. I am glad we took out those Risen Reefs. This game could have completely snowballed by now. So if we play Rien, these hit for five. If we play Corvold, we draw some cards. You know what I like. You know my favorite thing in the world. It's cards. Here, dragon, dragon. And we'll put you out tapped. And we'll send in the, the air, the, what, what, what will we call it? The aerial assault, the air force. Wow. Here in the U.S., I should have gotten that right away. We'll send in the air force. 
All right, spark double. More overgrowth elementals. Uh, you can attack if you want to. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Plus we have Rian. Yeah. You're going to take a lot of damage. Care to attack my army? Nay. All right. Let's see if we can send him home the fun way. With all these buy a box promos. Never even seen the animation before. Victory to the Dragon Angel Conglomerate. It's a Mardu hand. Lock it in. No green mana either. There's a lot wrong with this. But I can't resist, Hero and Akalia. My girl. I'm so ready. I'm just so hyped for somebody with angel wings and demon wings and a dragon's tail and yeah. She the best. Here comes the hero. And we'll see if the opponent has an answer dialed up or if they'll feel the wrath of a 1 1 token for free. <laughs> Johnny's Pride Mate. Let's go. Do I want to trade one of these? Maybe I do, considering I have two more. Let's see what we get off the Kalia. Nice to have a good air raid and a lot of chump blockers for the pride mate. Ooh, we got a hit. Which one do we want? It feels like the Aurelia puts up damage a lot faster and is generally stronger. Plus we have four of these in the deck, so there's still odds we'll draw one along the way. And yeah, I will offer the trade. These life gain decks probably don't want to trade away their pride mate. Oh, okay, they do. It's fine with me, too. I can live with that. I've got plenty where that came from. Aerialist. You do mess with my air force. All right, well, here comes the Vigilant. Currently outclassing the size of the Aerialist to get the damage in. And then we'll bring out the hero. Two more heroes means way more tokens for Aurelia. But then we're out of gas, and so we're going to need to scry some juice to the top of the deck. Our opponent's showing us the life gain pump bows, the, the cards that pump from life gain, and there's our first taste of the life gain. Do you want to attack me, Aerialist? I'll attack you back. I mean, the deck is designed to gain life, so maybe they don't care? Soul Mender, tap to gain a life. Oh yeah, these are going to get huge. Interesting. It means we can keep getting through this turn, and then we can play this to get through next turn. I like it. And if the opponent ever attacks, and this dies, I get it back. So yeah, this, this is sweet. Let's go. Hit him. Hit him hard. Now we do need to leave Rianne on the battlefield because the way that this works is Rianne has to both see the creature die and be on the battlefield, I believe, to get it back. Or no, the triggered ability happens when it dies. Rianne just has to see the death and then we should get it back at end step. Of course, it doesn't count for themselves. It says that whenever another multi-colored creature, creature dies specifically. And here's a tribunal to take away my fun. Now, we do have four Mortifies in the deck. Hopefully, we can find a solution to the Tribunal. But that's another land. Let's see what we can put on top. Yes. More of this, please. Make some more tokens. Now we can give plus two plus O, oh, Trample and Vigilance here, and keep attacking. Hiya! Get him, girl. You know that bloodthirsty aerialist wants none of this.
And there's the gain one, there's the pumps. Next turn we'll throw this at the opponent again, probably. We'll see. We might throw the Aurelia at them. And we'll throw a bunch of tokens at them too. We'll figure it out. Not sure quite what we're going to attack with next turn. We'll see how their turn goes, because I do want to play a replacement Kalia, so dying wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen. All right. So if that's the plan, we don't want to attack with the heroes. We want to attack with the one ones. Our opponent might have a removal spell. I could use Aurelia to pump Aurelia, which this might eat. We don't want that. Hmm. But it would mentor this one. And then the opponent's taking four. Block, block. They go up one. They take four, three. Hmm. It's not good. Let's see if we can just bluff, uh, bluff some beats out of them. Pump the Kalia. I could definitely throw some bait, though, and I think I will. Here comes some bait. All right, no blocks from the Soul Mender. Pump the critters. How are you going to play it? Angel of Grace flashes in. Not bad. A little bit of life protection there. Not one I see very often, Angel of Grace. All right, back up Kalia, let's go. Find me some goods. Or don't, that's fine, I guess. That leaves a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, not gonna lie. Nothing. Whiff. Stupid life gain deck. They're still too scared to attack, and look what I draw! I drew her again. Alright. Well, last time, where'd we get our opponent to? Not much. This is a gain one, this is a block, block, block. Yep, I think we just play you again. Give up the other one. Poor Legends. I've been playing Shadowverse a little bit in my spare time. They don't have Legends. You can play as many of your anime waifu as you need to. And there's a big hit. That's what we needed. That's a big hit. All right. Um, yeah, we'll pump this token like a boss. And no attacks. Hold up. But yeah, hopefully Korvold can draw us through this mess. Rude. Very freaking rude. <laughs> Very freaking rude. Oh my god. Mortify? Paging Dr. Mortify. Dr. Mortify. You have not shown up for your appointment this morning. I mean, we're just like dead, right? Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I draw a Mortify to pump these, this could be a lethal attack. Wait, Soul Mender. So, one, two, three, four, five, Mentor is six, seven, eight. Soul Mender is one. Yeah, we, we can't get a lethal attack out of it. These aren't doing much anymore, so they, that one can take a block. Actually, both of these can take blocks. Um, take 13. Try to see one more draw step to see if we can top deck. Yeah, we were ahead, and then it all fell apart. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a time I tried so hard. Shh. 
sure. We have a removal spell we can cast in some late game stuff in a scry land. I think it's okay. We're going to need to draw something to fill in the middle. If we do that, we're in good shape. Scry it up. No, more land is not what I had in mind. My mana base costs more than your house. <laughs> All right, Paradise Druid. One of the good things about Angrath's Rampage is that it can answer that. So we have red, we need black. So we can play Tomb and we can play Crypt. I choose the Tomb in case we draw a Paradise Druid. We won't have to shock for it. Get that lovely Druid out of there. I don't like that the whip sound is off sync. You guys see this? You hear the whip sound, then the whip snaps. I don't like it. What do you think? Do I keep Mortify ready? I think we just take a scry here and get another scry land out of the way. Ooh, you're nice. We'll keep you. You can stay. I could have also shocked to have Mortify open to kill whatever big monster the opponent plays. Of course, they're probably just going to play Nyssa. So it doesn't really matter. It mattered. That's a problem. All right, we gotta kill the ooze before it can spawn more oozies. And we'll get a tap land out of the way. And now we're, now we're definitely behind. We are behind. We have some big plays down the stretch that we can try to use to catch up. Okay. That wasn't too terrible. We can play the Seraph and try to trade with the Ooze. We can play the 5-4 because it dwarfs the entire board. But I think what I really want to do is play Rakdos. So I'm going to drop the Seraph because if Rakdos flips a coin on it, at least I get some 1-1s one and I don't have to take damage. I can play a tap land, avoid shocking myself this turn, and have something to spar with my opponent. They might not want to trade their Oozling, or maybe they will. Oh my. There are so many things. Really. How nice. Uh, they both trample. And they're knocking me to one? So do I use my Seraph just to absorb a little bit of damage? I think so, because all these creatures will be smaller next turn, so I think absorbing damage here is the right move. <clears throat> There's Kalia, a little late. I'll grab the swamp, cause reasons, I don't know. But, flip your coins. Are you ready for a Rakdos? Hmm, not good enough. Not good enough. And we lost both of our tokens. We have no chump blocks now. This is not good, we're dead. Uh, if the opponent attacks with both. And they did. So we could block here, but because of Trample, we're going to die regardless. Oh, Rakdos, why you have to kill my own things? Well, we have... We have both setup cards, Hero and Paradise Druid, and I think which one we play will depend on, well, what we see from the opponent and if we draw land. Grazer. Okay. Cliffs. Don't they know Field of the Dead isn't in this format anymore? Let's find out. Okie dokie then. Wow, they have six permanents, I have one. Magic is, this is fine. Magic is great. Let's go for the Paradise Druid. I can't be sure I'll draw a land next turn to do anything with my Hero of Precinct 1. Now let's see what they do with all this mana. Ceratops, okay. Big dumb boy. It does draw a card. Cards are nice, here's the Lotus Field. Okay. I mean, their, their draw is unbelievable <laughs> for what for what i assume they're trying to do um what's the right way to combat this we 
could get a Kalia down, which can start attacking through the air. We could set up for a Fae Curse King with a hero. I think that that's the best thing to do, is hope that our Fae Curse King sticks next turn. That means this turn we play hero and druid. Protection from blue, the one color I don't run. Haha. -ha. Joke's on you, Shifting Ceratops. By the way, our opponent has access to a million mana. A Hydroid Crasis would be a very powerful thing. Another Ceratops. I think our opponent's just here to beat up on Simic Flash. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is gonna sting. I don't doubt this is gonna leave a mark. Uh-huh. Get those triggers. I bet you attack. Any moment now. Here they come. All right, no blocks. Can't guard against that. For my next trick, I have six mana, potentially. We can Corvold up to a 5-5, five five, which isn't particularly great. We can Mortify and make a 1-1. One one. And then we can also play a Kalia. I think that's better. We're falling down on life, though. It's very, very scary. But we gotta do what we gotta do. Back up, Korvold. Okay. Your turn. And the opponent has access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If they reclaim her tricks, maybe they can do even more. Commence the end game. Sure, draw two, make a nerd. Okay, where's their green mana though? Now they can't give out trample. Maybe they're not worried about it. Let's see what happens. This is gonna get interesting. I can kill the Kiora with the Kalia. Uh huh. No green mana for Trample. No green mana for Trample. Okay, well, in that case... Should I be trading my hero and some tokens for the Ceratops to get it off the board while I can? The Grazer can block this Zenith Seeker, but at least then we get rid of the Grazer. This gives out Trample, right? Still doesn't kill it. Because this would attack for five and this would absorb three of it. I... You know, I think we get it off the board. I think we get it off the board here and try to stabilize with Corvold. Let the Kalia sit over there. Or not Kalia, Kiora. You know what I mean. Here's Dragon. Dragon eat token. Yay, a land. We needed that a bit. Could, s yeah, let's get another hero onto the battlefield. Get these guys cooking. Cooking up one ones. Elvish Reclaimer can do the thing. This is, and the thing is, sacrifice a land, search your library for a land, and put it onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle the library. So, you can set up another Lotus Field if you like, or if there's some other land that you really enjoy. And, a, yep, the double Lotus Field set up. Up to nine available mana. There's a lot of very strong things they could do that I can't beat, but it looks like they're plan just is to always commence the end game. This doesn't trample, so they'll need to find a way to give it trample if they want to get through the hero tokens. Yep. To make a Another Ceratops, but no mana to give it the hasties. It's a very scary card, though. All right. Eats a 1-1. We draw Angrath's Rampage. So, what I like this turn is if we play Aurelia, Corvold, read this again, the creature gains plus 2, plus 0, oh, trample if it's red, vigilance if it's white. So Corvold can have vigilance and trample, which means the Grazer can't stop Corvold from killing the Kiora. So that's pretty lovely. 
And then a Angrass Rampage. If the opponent's crazy and blocks with the Grazer, the Rampage can take out one of these creatures, which would be nice. So let's go for it. No Vigilance, not a White Dragon. We'll have to live with it. Oh god, Rakdos the Showstopper. Way more likely to kill all my cool stuff than my opponents here. Alright. We've got a blocker. We've got a blocker. Seems okay. Do I fire off the Rampage or do I hold it for something else? There might be a Nissa who shakes the world. I think we hold it. Does this, does this say sacrifice though? No, destroy. Oh. If Rakdos said sacrifice, if the Corvold lived through the triggers, oh, the fun we could have. Not again. Not again. Not again. Scry with the temple to the bottom. Okay. It's a big boy. It's not good. It's not good at all. Could have taken out my token, but I guess you're thinking a Paradise Druid is still going to end up blocking? How do I kill this thing? Seems bad for me. Alright, I don't... Opponent didn't come up with a way to give tramps. And we didn't draw a removal spell, so it's up to Corvold's trigger now. Or we just go for this. This seems like the last resort. Maybe I should, I should attack with the Corvold first and then play this. What am I sacrificing? A hero? I don't really want to sacrifice a hero. Could sacrifice the Aurelia. Ugh. Don't love it. I'm going with... You know what? Live large. Live life like there's no tomorrow. Flip the coins, baby. Good God. Really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, good old jank. Good old janky wreck yourself jank. Oh, yeah. Um, great. I'm so glad I came to this party. I'm so glad we did this. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> All right, opponent. Finish me. I don't deserve to live. I wrecked my own board. What can I say? All your creatures were immune to coin flips. Protection from coin flips. Except for this Elvish Reclaimer, you know. The will was not strong enough there. But four of my own creatures and the two tokens I created? Really? Six creatures of mine? Yeah, make... Make sure you do it with style. We wouldn't we wouldn't want to get confused. Wait, why are you targeting this? You're just flexing? I have no time for flexing. I hope you enjoyed this Kalia aggro video. While it was nice to revisit her, the deck is certainly good for fun, but it's not built for ranked play. It really is just an adventure in throwing some of our five cost mythic creatures around that don't really go together. But uh, I had a good time with it, and I hope you also enjoy getting the jank out every now and then. Let me know in comments if you still enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you later.